Now that we know how to use the Bezier tool in two dimensions, I'm going to uh, recreate this three-dimensional object using Leapfrog's Bezier tool. Now, this is uh, the Marvin data set. This is the 1% copper shell. So I'll just isosurface this from the data. So what I'm going to try and attempt to do is to replicate this shape using the Bezier tool and a couple of other tools I'm going to introduce to you. First of all, we're going to look towards the north. And we will slice and slice orthogonal to the y-axis. So click on this green slice north axis button. We centralize the section. We zoom in. Now to activate the polyline, we click on this tool new polyline. Okay, once you go OK with the name, this menu comes up on the left hand side of the view screen. This is the pen tool and I said before you can actually draw like any other drawing program, these points and lines and right mouse click. So we can do that, but we're not going to do that. We are going to use a more accurate tool and that is the Bezier tool and this is the way you do it. You click on the tool, go up to the top 12 o'clock position, draw the tangent. Again you do not let go of your left mouse. Draw the line, uh, the tangent line, so that it's about a third of the way of the path that you are going to eventually draw. Let go of the tangent. And there's your line. So there's your curvature, that's the line you're going to draw. But the next control point is over here. And notice that the purple line is actually not on the path. You have to click again, hold down the left mouse, draw the tangent once again and put the line on the correct path. We let go again and we go to the next control point over here and we do exactly the same thing. Now note that I have not closed here, I can go right mouse click to terminate that line. Okay, we're going to draw another section orthogonal to the east axis. So we click on this icon here, this red icon, and we can centralize it. And we look towards the east. So we're going to draw two polylines here, one here, another one over here. We are not going to cross the, the first polyline that we drew in here. We can see that polyline right here. Get the busy tool. Again, keep away from this polyline. Draw the tangent. Click, drag. Click, drag. Let go. Ah, right mouse click, sorry. Now, Again, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Right mouse click. Now let's just look at the lines that we've drawn. You will notice that I have now one, two, three polyline segments. They are not joined. We are going to interpolate these points. How does that occur? Now, really, we are, we, they look like normal polylines, but if you turn on this ribbon view, you will notice that there is a polarity to these polylines. You have the red side, the positive side, and the blue side, the negative side. These, in fact, 
and this tool is in fact drawing three sets of lines which will generate three sets of points on the line itself will be zero points the positive side will have positive distances away from that line and negative distances in the inside so once you go save if you click on this button here you will notice the off surface points generated here as indicated by this icon and then the interpolant and then the whole thing is interpolated and here you are that's my model of the copper shell which is this shape now the copper shell you can turn find out the uh, volume by going to properties and it's about uh, actually that is the drawn one it's about 14.3 million cubic units if you go to the copper that's about 16.6 .6 cubic units so what I'm going to do is going to draw a few more polylines to bring this other one closer to the copper shell. Bring that one down. Now I've got uh, my red surface is inside so this is smaller. So the trick is to do this is that you don't do serial sections along the coordinate axes. You actually you take local symmetry planes. For example this is a bulge here. If you take a symmetry plane through here you can actually draw a polyline. So I'm taking a symmetry plane. You click on L to look at the section and you draw a segment here. I'm not drawing any segments that are not drawn. But notice that the polarity of this polyline is different. So we need to switch that over. We go to the next place where you can see another symmetry plane. Alright, now red is inside again, so I ne we need to flip that over. We have another one over here, so we click L, this one, the red is on the outside, so that's fine. So it looks about right. We're going to save the polyline set. It does say new polyline, but in fact, these are uh, several polylines for each file, so I just have to remember that. So we're getting close here. We might uh, put in a, another, another slice through there. We we'll have to make sure that it's a approximately the symmetry plane. and draw it in like that flip it over once again and uh, there's another bump over here so in this case we can take a section through there Shift L. Now again, this needs to be flipped. Okay, I think that's um, that would do it. Maybe I'll use another tool over here. There's a little, there's a bulge over here which you need to uh, push this red surface after the yellow. So we go close up we're looking at the edge view of that bulge. We take the point file and notice that you can't actually draw on that surface. That sign won't allow me to do that so we need to click on the draw on objects. So we go there, we go to the edge of it 
and if you go click you'll generate a point but you can actually draw out a handle this handle will tell you that it is the red side on that handle it's not a tangent it's a handle that is orthogonal to the surface that you are going to generate we can click on the surface ribbon and we can view it and you can see that at that point it will be red is facing outward so that's what we want so we click on save once again and there you are so it's pretty close now we can check the volume remember it was about 16.6 .6 cubic meters I believe for the copper one percent, sixteen point six, yes. So we go to the surface, we go to the properties, and it is now seventeen point seven. So very close to the original shape. So that's basically how you use the Bezier tool. It is a very effective tool if you practice and uh, work on it. You can draw things very accurately and uh, create very interesting looking three-dimensional objects in LeapFrog.